Hello, welcome to the Online Strength Coach Podcast, episode 84, chill out with your chin. Hello, and welcome to episode 84 of the Online Strength Coach Podcast. Hope you've enjoyed your week week just past. Uh, Today's topic is kind of from the hip. It's basically something that I've experienced from my training and also from the training of other lifters that brought forward a moment of clarity, if you might want to say, as regards to the way people do approach the training and the ways that they should approach the training. So what brings us on is there's a couple of lifters... Uh, both who are good friends of mine who I've helped out by just giving them programs. Um, so the first one is a young fellow who plays basketball. Um, been lifting within the CSE for a number of years. He's fell in with... Um, I didn't meet him initially. I met him through my other friends. So I've got a group of training buddies at the CSE that I train with for a lot Um from about 2008 right through to about 2014. I still do train with them occasionally. Or well, maybe not as much as I used to. Anyway, the this guy uh, fell in with my friends and then as a natural extension, met him. He's a really nice guy. And uh, just from him talking to me and me talk, um, him initiating the conversation with me, um, I read him a, a little uh, like three-week training block with the idea being that he would increase his frequency a little bit and use lighter percentages to allow him to concentrate on the execution of his lifts. Now, he wasn't weak when he started. He was uh, probably, oh, not probably, he was squatting 200 kilos, he was benching 120 kilos, and he was deadlifting 270 kilos. And he probably weighs in the region of like 90 to 95 kilos. I don't actually, don't actually know his body weight. He also plays basketball for the university. So he's an active kid. Uh, he also he goes to uni. Um, so it's a fair amount on his plate. Uh, a reasonable amount going on. So when I, he ran this program for nine weeks. Uh, went through three cycles. And at the back end... Of those nine weeks, he's basically been doing a bit of maxing for the last couple of weeks, so the last week and a half. He squatted 210 for three, so that's 10 kilos above his previous 1RM for three reps. He benched 125 for three, so that's five kilos above his one, previous 1RM for five reps. And on deadlift, he deadlifted 260 for three, and also deadlifted 290 for one. So that's 10 kilos on his previous best, and doing 10 kilos off his old 1RM for a triple. So he's made a significant amount of progress. And the guy's been training within our group for about three years now. So he's not new to the process. He's not new to lifting. He's been training with a bunch of he's been training with a good group of guys, a strong group of guys, and no doubt been training hard for three years. But he's made quite a large amount of progress in a short amount of time. Now the reason he's done that is he's went from what I like to call redlining it. And when I say redlining it, I mean you basically train to RMs or you train as heavy as you can. So maybe you follow a program where you're doing fives, but if you do fives, it's fives as heavy as you can manage. Or it's five by five, and by the time you get to set four and five, you're gutting it out to to make those reps or whatever set and rep scheme you make. By the time you get to the second or the last set, you're getting very close to failure. This is probably the most common training style utilized by strong people. And it's also probably, it, it will work to a point. You will get stronger doing it. I've utilized it myself. I've utilized it with people to get them stronger. But it's something that I'm pretty much certain now I'm going to stop utilizing with people. Because I've seen over the last little while, so this is kind of philosophy I've been developing or something that's been in my head or something that I've been working with for the last two years. And the change in my training has been night and day. I, I myself, I've put like uh, 20 kilos on my squat. I've put 
currently 10 kilos on my deadlift, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to put on 30 kilos on my deadlift by by summer. And I, I've definitely put at least 10 kilos on my bench, although I've not realized it by doing it yet. I've done that in someone who is already a quote-unquote elite-level lifter who's still natural and has been training as a natural for 10 years, training hard for 10 years. If I can affect that change in myself, and also I've now repeated it in a few different lifters, so another case study we'll go through uh, at the, in the next part of the podcast is a, a lifter who is a similar experience level and also a lot stronger than me. Um, if you can manage to affect these changes by taking the, the pedal off the gas a little bit, and doing two things, increasing the uh, the frequency of training and increasing the volume of training, then I think it's something that that reasonably, or within reason, the vast majority of lifters should be paying attention to. Certainly this is something that I think that natural lifters should be doing. I think when we talk about lifters who utilize um, performance enhancing drugs or steroids, it's a bit of a different go- ball game for those guys because they're pretty much in that they're in that adaptation state 24-7. They can pretty much do anything and adapt. And that becomes less true the longer they utilize it. Uh, and you can kind of try to circumvent that by upping the amount you take. However, there's only a limited time span that works. Because as, any, as you do anything to a body, it adapts to it. And the thresholds increase and you need to do different things to, to, to get the outcomes you want. Very much like training, um, but I've I've seen this work repeatedly. I've I haven't seen many programs or many approaches work like this so repeatedly for different levels of lifters. So the most lifters that I work with are probably of an intermediate level. Uh, only a few elite lift elite level lifters that I work with, but vast majority that I work with quite a few elite level athletes. But within the lifting space, um, I only work with a, with a, a few like really strong guys or girls. With my less elite, if you will, lifters, I've seen, for the intermediate level lifters, I've seen this work really well. Um, But for the more novice level lifters, this is where I think this kind of approach is maybe uh, not not something that would work too well when you're still in that kind of first year, first two years of training. And you probably want to redline it all the time because you can, and you may as well take advantage of, uh, of, of that opportunity to make that sort of progress. So this is sort of a, this is advice that would probably apply more to an intermediate to advanced level lifter, and certainly to an elite level lifter. I think you should look and read, or look at, or study closely more of Boris Chico's work. Uh, also look at some of the other guys that are pushing frequency, uh, Mike Tushner, Reactive Training Systems, the excellent powerlifting coach, excellent lifter, and. Um, Pay attention to some of his work. See what see the common threads between these two guys. Uh, what they do. Also look at the Norwegian, or sorry, the Danish part of the team. Look at the work of Dennis Wolf. Look at how they train. Look at how they work, and juxtapose it to what you're doing. Um, these guys, if they're not natural, at least they they train in tested federations. Also, if you look at the work of uh, Blaine Sumner more recently, a uh, guy just set the all-time IPF. Single ply world record for the total, also all time bench and all time squat. He's taken up an approach where he is doing a squat variation, a bench variation, and a deadlift variation every training session. So we're talking, we're, talk, we're, talk, we're, talk, we're sitting amongst um, certainly within a, a natural lifting, natural powerlifting. We're sitting in quite good company here. We have probably the best powerlifting coach of all time. We have the highest equipment total of all time. We have the f- former kind of uh, poster kid of the IPF, Carl Urgeser and Dennis Wolf. Sorry for butchering that pronunciation. And uh, we got Mike Tushner, who's probably, or has been definitely one of the best natural, or natural in inverted commas, the best IPF lifter um, in America for a long time. Probably more recently, the likes of Blaine Sumner and Ray Wilkins kind of coming to the fore and maybe putting pushing him down the pecking order, but he's certainly been a top level lifter for a long time. A smart guy and a very good coach. So 
when we look at these people and we look at the trends, what do we look at? We look at some common trends here is frequency of lifts, competition specificity on the lifts, train with a reasonable amount of volume. We're not looking to train anywhere near, near maximal capacity all the time. There are places for it in the program. We do do it every we do it every now and again. We do it sparingly, some more than others. The likes of Mike Tushner or Rack Training Systems will definitely do it more than Boris Shiko will do it. However, they both get great results. Although I would go with Shiko on that one, uh, based off his results. So these are things that we should be looking to do within our training. And these are kind of the changes I've made in my training, and the changes I've made in other people's training, and seen the dividend. <coughs> Seen the results myself, and I can definitely advocate this as a philosophy going forward. This is definitely the one I'm going to be pushing when it comes to powerlifting specific training. It's something I will adapt to my sports training programs as well. It's something I maybe will talk about. I think within sports training, it has more utility, and um, but I think it's, it needs to be applied in context. Applied it certainly needs to be applied differently than it needs to be applied within powerlifting but it's definitely something that has some worth and something that I will talk to probably in a later podcast so my second uh, case study this one hasn't really bared the fruits of labor as of yet although we're getting there so again this is a guy I've talked about before and uh, probably the strongest lifter that I've worked with uh, a natural lifter with a 320 for 3 squat bench 210 and uh they lift 335, weighs in 135, 136 kilos, uh, but 24, 25 years of age. Probably the most naturally talented lifter that I've ever met. Uh, this guy, although all these accolades that he quite rightfully owns, lifts with probably some of the worst technique that you'll see in the gym. Something that we're currently writing, utilizing this kind of new training philosophy. So this guy... Um, no doubt it uh, was a bit of a culture shock for him and uh, probably quite difficult for him for the first six weeks. But he performed like a six-week block, so typically he would have trained once a week, so he'd have benched probably once, although that changed slightly. But he would have benched once, maybe twice, would have only squatted and only they lifted once a week. Now, to get him back in the frequency, what we did with him, what I did with him, um, what we did, me and him together... We took his weights right back, so he was training with like 50% to 70% weights for six weeks, just so he could get used to the twice a week frequency. So we're talking about a guy who squats, was squatting 280 for 10, who had squatted 280 for 10, was doing sets of five, like 240, so this kid likes to lift heavy too, and really dialed in the really keen to fucking push himself, like he loves that. So this was a, this was a culture shock for him, but he, he stuck with it, he did it, credit to him. And now we're getting to the stage now where we're doing a bit of an undulating, a weekly undulating program, WP, whoop. Uh, where he's, well, basically, we, the kind of program that I've come up with at the minute that I'm utilizing and um, kind of honing as we go, takes a Boris Shiko. So that the Shiko influences, we do three main lifts in a session. Uh, we, the, we work out three or four times a week. And we alternate, so we'll do lower body, upper body, lower body, or upper body, lower body, upper body when it comes to the main lifts. The main lifts are derivatives of the competitive lifts. We spread the vo- spread the intensity and spread the volume um, over multiple sets. And we kind of, the emphasis is volume and then the, the, vol- the, 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 the focus then becomes intensity in the following week. So we flip flop week to week volume and intensity. Uh, typically done within four week blocks and it's something that I'm kind of fiddling with at the minute but having quite good success with but still trying to hone in and uh, and utilize so I've probably got five lifters at the minute including myself utilizing this approach and it's paying quite good dividends at the minute so it's something that I will develop as we go but that's kind of the crux of it so he's doing that program now so I went on a kind of six week uh, phase or six week block of just familiarization with the frequency of the training, and now he's on to this um, week, this whoop training, <laughs> uh, and he's doing really well. So recently, he tripled three fifteen on the deadlift, so his all time triple personal best on deadlift is three twenty. Did three fifteen 
really easily after after sets of 295. Could have done five or six, so deadlifts trucking along really well. On squat, he did 305 for triple, so his best triple on squat is 320, although depth and technique questionable. This 305 was with good technique and reasonable depth. Depth's something that we would, we're probably going to work on a bit further down the line. But making really good progress as he goes, and his bench is definitely coming on, and his bench we will probably look to realise or look to kind of get more of an idea of where it's at this week. But again, a talented lifter with an 8-10 to 10 year hard, like, <laughs> well I say this guy trains hard, he trains fucking hard. Not so hard anymore, but he, he's he been training hard as fuck for uh, 10 years, or 8-10 to 10 years. Um, and he always, <laughs> he's a very talented lifter, uh, former British junior champion, Current British junior uh, British record holder, uh, and also unofficial deadlift world record holder in the junior class for IPF. Uh, he set it at a British Championship, so it doesn't count towards uh, a world record. So obscenely a talented lifter who's has a very, when it comes to intensity, a very high level of training base. Who's getting stronger and more technically competent from his training style. So. So I'm probably going to end there. So a couple of case studies, a bit of a of perspective and a bit of talk around um, kind of how I'm utilizing it and where I'm going with it. So basically the crux of it is train with more frequency, train with slightly more volume, train with exercise variation, exercise variation, uh, variation that's specific to what you want to get better at and uh, stop training so fucking hard, pretty much. Hope you've enjoyed uh, listening to the podcast. Please subscribe on iTunes. Please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you kept checking us there. If you're checking us on SoundCloud, please subscribe. Uh, the website, if you don't know what it is, www.onlinestrengthcoach.com forward slash podcast. There you'll get all the recent show notes, the download of the episode. You can stream it there live if you want. It'll be updated every time an episode's there. Uh, if you want to send any kind of e- if you want to email me for any reason, speedpowerperformance, gmail.com is the email. Check us out on YouTube, Speed Power Fitness. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions or comments, uh, any questions, please leave them below in the comments section on the on the WordPress site, on the YouTube, or shoot me an email uh, to the previous mentioned email address. I've been Mark. Thank you very much for listening. And I'll leave you with the sounds of the white buffalo. Hopefully, I will catch you again this week for episode 85. She ain't had no easy ride Joe lost his shit in the dark She can split where she stood by his side Jolene Well you know she ain't no never She drinks in the car She dance on the bar And she's the loudest of sun Ooh, she goes into crazy Come home, let's celebrate with one shoe.